To understand race better, we should think about how this social construct was created, how it's been used as a social tool to advance some people's interests, and why the concept continues to exist. The first use of the word race was in the 1700s, when it was used to describe the genetic and breeding lineage of plants. Carolus Linnaeus devised a simpler and consistent hierarchical system for plants. His taxonomy of groupings is used to this day, and you may even remember them from biology as kingdom, class, order, genus, species, and a smaller grouping now called subspecies. He felt so strongly about the accuracy of his classification system that he said, God creates. Linnaeus organizes. This categorization was then quickly applied to the breeding stock of domestic animals. So instead of saying a horse or a goat was a certain breed, like we would today, it was referred to as being a certain race. This concept was then extended to be applied to people. Now realize that Linnaeus was European. So any concepts that he developed would have a Eurocentric underpinning. He would think in terms of white or Caucasian as the norm, and those would have positive attributes associated with them. And he would see other categories as being different. So he created five classifications of people, the Americanus, the Africanus, Asiaticus, Europeanamus, and Monstrosus. Each one of these classifications was based on the characteristics that he observed in different geographical regions. I hope that you can appreciate the fact that this is well before Charles Darwin's theories of adaptivity, and that characteristics could have very adaptive benefits in certain areas of the world. An important point is that Linnaeus thought of Europeans as having characteristics that were better or superior. So European lines were considered the better breeding. Also, try to think in terms of what these theories might mean for exploration of the new world and how the idea that European Amos lines being superior could help justify the treatment of the indigenous peoples of the Americas. As I said before, the term race was first used in agriculture. Instead of describing a plant as a variety or an animal as having certain breeding, the word race was used instead. It was Blumenbach that then applied the term to people. When this happened, Linnaeus's original terminology was changed to Caucasian, Mongolian, Malayan, Negroid, and American. And of course, those who were European, i.e. meaning Caucasian, were thought of as having higher value, being more intelligent, being healthier, and overall better people. When one is thought of as having more value, then it becomes easy to create a hierarchical structure which then perpetuates inequality. Don't forget that this is all happening in the 1700s and that this is the time that Europe is colonizing the Americas. This idea of Europeans being a superior race then justifies the American practice of slavery. When one group of people believes they are superior, and understand this is dependent and based entirely on the concept of race, it becomes much easier to justify an entire system of extreme subjugation. Slavery was not new in the 1700s, meaning that it had existed for thousands of years. It happened to be the basis for an economic system of colonization in the Americas. In order to justify slavery, Europeans had to believe they were superior to those people they were subjugating. The concept of race and the way in which Linnaeus and Blumenbach developed these categories supported 
the belief in superiority of the Europeans and thus justified slavery. Now, at the same time, the concept of phenotype is being developed. And this concept is based on the premise that there are observable characteristics of an organism and that those characteristics are then used to categorize people by race. 